students, I am Dr. Gayatri. I am here at Smriti College of Pharmaceutical Education and today I am going to teach you about hypertension. So in our syllabus, the next topic is antihypertensive drugs. So before understanding what antihypertensive drugs are or what their actions are, it is good for us to understand what is hypertension, what happens in hypertension. So, so that we will be able to understand in a better way how it should be treated. So let's start our class. Hypertension. What is hypertension? When we hear the term hypertension, we know that it consists of two words that is hyper and tension. So hyper is more. Hyper means more or increase. Tension means pressure. So hypertension is nothing but increased pressure. So when we come to the definition of hypertension, for ease of understanding and remembrance, I have divided it into three parts. It is, in general, the definition of hypertension is persistently elevated arterial blood pressure above 130 by 80 mmHg. So it consists of persistently elevated arterial blood pressure above 130 by 80 mmHg. So, we can clearly see that it should be a persistently elevated blood pressure. So, in some cases when a patient reaches the hospital, out of fear and out of stress, the patient's blood pressure increases. So, that cannot be considered, uh, that patient cannot be considered as a hypertensive patient because that blood pressure increase happened only for a short period of time. So, the blood pressure of the patient should be persistently elevated so that in order to call that patient a hypertensive patient. So that, that has to do with persistently elevated arterial blood pressure above 130 by 80. So this is according to AHA guidelines 2017. Earlier according to JNC 7 it was 140 by 90 mm Hg. So when we come to hypertension this is how it is denoted HTN. Whenever you see the word HTN, it means hypertension. So, coming to the blood pressure. So, we have seen in the definition that increased elevated blood pressure. So, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is nothing but the pressure exerted by blood on the walls of the arteries. So, when the blood is passing through the arteries, the pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the arteries is called blood pressure. So, it, uh, there is a formula to calculate blood pressure. It is cardiac output into total peripheral resistance. We know what cardiac output is. The amount of blood that heart pumps out in one minute, within a minute. And total peripheral resistance is, the, there is a certain resistance in the uh, arteries and the blood vessels. And the blood has to overcome that resistance in order to pass through the uh, blood vessels. It's just as a pipe. If you are holding the pipe tightly, the pressure will be increased when uh, the water is passing through it. So that is what is total peripheral resistance. The the pressure of the pressure that the uh, blood has to overcome. And then cardiac output also can be calculated by heart rate into stroke volume. So blood pressure is cardiac output into total peripheral resistance. Cardiac output is nothing but heart rate into stroke volume. So we know that blood pressure is directly proportional to cardiac output and it is directly proportional to total peripheral resistance. And since cardiac output is directly proportional to heart rate and stroke volume, blood pressure is also directly proportional to heart rate and stroke volume. This is important because when we learn about the treatment, we see how the aim of a particular uh, treat therapy is to reduce this or this in order to reduce the blood pressure. So, what is the instrument used for measuring the blood pressure? It is called spymo manometer. And we know that uh, the normal blood pressure is 120 by 80 mmHg. So, what is this 120 and what is this 80? What do these represent? So, we know that numerator represents systolic blood pressure and denominator represents diastolic blood pressure. So what is this systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure? So when we see systole is nothing but 
systole occurs when the heart contracts to pump the blood out. So we can clearly understand that because the heart is contracting to uh, pump the blood out, systolus obviously should be having more pressure. And then diastolus, it occurs when the heart relaxes after the contraction. So systole occurs during a contraction and diastole occurs during relaxation. So because of that, systolus uh, is in the numerator, it is a higher value and diastole is in the denominator and it is a lower value. So systolic blood pressure. So we understood what systole is, what diastole is. So what is systolic blood pressure? Systolic blood pressure is nothing but the amount of pressure in the arteries during the contraction. And then diastolic blood pressure is the amount of pressure when the heart is at rest. That is between the beats when the heart is in resting condition. That blood pressure is called diastolic blood pressure. And during the contraction the blood pressure is called systolic blood pressure. Now coming to the types of hypertension. There are two types of hypertension. That is primary hypertension and secondary hypertension. What is primary hypertension? In primary hypertension, the cause behind the hypertension is unknown. So why a patient got hypertension is unknown. And then in secondary hypertension, the, uh, the cause is known. So some of the common causes are chronic kidney disease and uh, the family history of the patient and also obesity, certain factors like that make it clear that this is the reason because of which this patient has got hypertension. So, secondary hypertension causes are known. Primary hypertension causes are unknown. So, what are some of the common causes of hypertension in general? They are, as we all know, we keep hearing these even in our everyday life. That is high salt intake and then stress and family history of hypertension, lack of physical activity, obesity, smoking, alcohol consumption, age over 65 years. So these are some of the common causes of hypertension. So the hypertension is uh, divided into certain stages and this particular aspect is very important. So what are these stages of hypertension? So we know that normal hypertension is 120 by 80. So this represents the systolic blood pressure and this part represents the diastolic blood pressure. So normal is 120 systolic, diastolic is 80. In elevated blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is between 120 and 129 and diastolic blood pressure is 80. And in stage 1, stage 1 hypertension, the blood pressure is between 130 and 139 and 80 and 89. And in stage 2 hypertension, the blood pressure is at least 140 and in diastolic it is at least 90. And then there is a scenario called hypertensive crisis. In this case, the blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure is above 180 and in the diastolic blood pressure is above 120. So these, this is about the stages of hypertension. And apart from that, there are certain mechanisms in our body that regulate the blood pressure. So what are these? There is a system called RAS or Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System. So when we carefully look at the uh, name of this system, we clearly understand that this system has three important aspects. One is Renin, one is Angiotensin and one is Aldosterone. So how do these function and what happens in this system, what cycle happens in this system is what we will learn in our next class. For here, in a brief way, when the blood pressure reduces in the body, this system gets activated. And once this system is activated, it acts on kidneys and blood vessels to increase back the blood pressure. So basically when the blood pressure is low, RAS comes into picture and it causes increase of blood pressure. And then the second system is baroreceptors. Baroreceptors means pressure sensing. So we know that baro refers to pressure. So these are pressure sensing receptors. 
So these are the pressure sensing nerve endings present in certain blood vessels and also in heart. So in heart it is present in carotid sinus and iota. So they are called carotid sinus baroreceptors and aortic baroreceptors. So what do they do? They act by so when they sense a reduced <coughs> reduction in blood pressure, they act by changing the activity of sympathetic nervous system. So what do they do? When, a, <coughs> when the blood pressure of a person reduces, these baroreceptors get activated and then they cause increase in sympathetic activity and decrease in parasympathetic activity. So what happens when sympathetic activity increases? It causes vasoconstriction and increase of cardiac output and therefore the blood pressure increases. So, so these, are, these are certain mechanisms in our body that are present to naturally regulate the blood pressure. So in the next class we will see about renin angiotensin aldosterone system in detail because we, uh, when we go to the pharmacology we see many classes of drugs that directly act on this system in order to reduce the blood pressure. Hope you all understood. Thank you.